Soldering out in the field is something that I do with some bit of regularity. It's always been a hassle though. Typically, I will take a battery box, an inverter, and my Hakko soldering station just to solder some wires for an antenna. That got real old real quick, so I needed a solution. I needed something that I could put the entire soldering station inside my battery box that I'm already going to have with me. No inverters, no nothing. So I found a soldering iron that powers with USB-C or 12 to 24 volt DC power and it cost me all of 40 bucks and it's inside this box right now. Would you like to see it? Let's take a look this time on Ham Radio Tube. So check this out. Helping hands, got it. Got a little silicone helping hands jobby there. We've got our solder tip cleaner and some solder and a little plastic baggie there. We've got USB cables and down in here we have the Pine Sill Smart Mini soldering iron. So let's take a look at this Pine Sill. The first thing we have to do when we get it is insert the tip into the hole and with a screwdriver tighten it down and that's it. You're ready to solder. But we need a power source. So this thing powers with either USB-C PD, it also accepts USB 3.0, and you also have a 5.5 by 2.5 millimeter DC socket that accepts 12 to 24 volts, and we'll do 18 to 88 watts. It's got a nice little rubber grip there for holding, and it even has a little flat spot right there for when you need to set it down out in the field on a picnic bench or something. Keeps the tip off the uh, surface, so it's not gonna cause any fires or melt anything. And it's got some safety features uh, in it as well. So let's plug this in and I will show you the screen and the displays and everything and then we'll solder some stuff and see how well it does. So as we can see, here is a coaxial plug. This is actually the one for my ICOM 705. Plugs in there, works just perfectly. But what I care more about is USB. Here's USB-C, plug it in. You can see we have the voltage, we can see the temperature 704 degrees that I have the iron set at, and we have the current temperature of the soldering iron because I haven't actually turned it on yet. But notice when I plug in the DC socket, we're showing a higher voltage. So this actually will perform a little bit better with a higher voltage, but I've not had any problems whatsoever with USB-C PD. So that's what we're gonna use. Now once we have power connected to the soldering iron, if you're ready to solder, all we have to do is hit this plus button and it's going to start heating up the iron. While we're waiting for that to heat up, let's talk about this screen. There's motion controls in this, like a gyroscope or something. So one, it's going to know, are you right-handed, which I am, it's going to have the display like that. Well, what if you're left-handed? Look at that. The screen just flipped over. See that? Right-handed, left-handed. How cool is that? But also because this has a gyroscope inside of it, if this is just sitting here at idle, after a predetermined amount of time that you can set inside the menu, this will go into standby mode, which you can set what temperature it is. But once you pick it up, once it senses movement, it's gonna start heating up again. That is so freaking cool. Now, if we wanna just turn it off, we can just long press the minus button and there we can see it is now cooling down. Another really cool thing, say you have a pesky component that just, you need more heat. Well, we have a boost on here. So if we long press this plus button, I've set my boost to 800 degrees. So this is gonna heat up to 800 degrees so I can get more heat to the component so I can get a better solder. And then we let it go. It goes back down to 700 that I've preset. And speaking of settings, boy, does this thing have a lot. They're very easy to navigate and use. You're just going to use the minus button here to get into the menu. And you can see we have our power settings. Then we can hit the plus button to get inside there. Here are the power source. This is the cutoff voltage for like a battery. So for example, I'm using a lithium iron phosphate battery, which is a four cell in series. So four S and then we can go menu down and set the minimum voltage per cell, which a lithium iron phosphate's minimum voltage per cell, the nominal voltage is 3.2. So I've set that to 3.2 and you just use the plus button. You can only go up in these settings 
So we can set that to 3.2 for my battery. The QC voltage, you can set that. PD timeout. Then we can go into soldering settings and here's where we can set the boost. So I'm gonna set mine to 800 degrees. So when we long press the plus button, it'll boost up to that 800 degrees. Startup behavior, we'll change it to um, basically start up at no heating or you can set it to heat at the rest heating or you can set it to heat uh, to full heat. You can change the temperature in increments. So if you just wanna get a little more heat, this is just how you would adjust it manually on the main screen, up to 50 degrees per one press. I'm just gonna leave mine at one. Long temperature changed, so a long press presumably will change the temperature by 10 degree increments. You can allow locking of the buttons. And I just, I love how it tells you what this is gonna do. We've got a sleep mode. Here's where we can change the user interface from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Display orientation, A or reverse, like that. So right hand or left hand. Cool down flashing, I'm gonna turn that on. Scrolling speed, I want that to be fast. You can swap the plus or minus keys. The animation speed, how fast the text scrolls across the screen. So see how it's faster now. Animation loop, screen brightness, crank that up to 10. You can invert the screen or the screen color, boot logo, detailed idle screen, detailed solder screen. So that's going to give you more information on the main display when you're just soldering or when it's an idle, it tells you kind of what the iron is doing. We've got advanced settings. We can hit a power limit in watts. We can calibrate the CJC, whatever the heck that is cold junction compensation. You can calibrate the input voltage, pulse power. I have no idea what that is. I don't know what a lot of these things are and then you can restore it to defaults. And then you've got your language. So pretty easy to use menus. And here now you can see the iron is set to 600 degrees, which I am going to change that. So we can just use the plus button to go up in increments of one degree like we set, or we can long press this for 10 degrees because I set that for 10 degrees. You can do whatever you want. It's using about an amp and a half right now to heat up, but once it's hot, it hardly uses any current at all. And this is what setting those detailed screen means. So it shows us the readout of the temperature that we've set the iron to, how many watts it's pulling right now, and we also get the voltage and then presumably this countdown timer, you can see as I, mute, as I move it, it's staying at 50 seconds. But if I stay at idle, it's gonna start counting down. And once that 50 seconds is expired, it's gonna go into sleep mode. And there you go. You can see it's sleeping. It's cooling down now. But if we just touch it, look at that. It's starting to heat back up again. That is freaking awesome. But how well does it solder? Let's find out. I've got a few different gauges of wire here. Get my tip cleaned off with my 3D printed tip cleaner there. And the iron's set to 700 degrees. This is some 14, uh, no, excuse me. This is some 18 gauge wire. Let's see how well this works. Oh yeah. There we are, getting a good flow going. 18 gauge wire, no problem, 700 degrees, beautiful. Not my best work, but it works. Let's try some 14 gauge copper wire. I'm actually really amazed at how well this small tip works so far. I've only been using like 26 gauge wire, but it did that uh, 18 gauge, no problem. See if we can, oh yeah, there we are. 14 gauge, no problem. And that was totally out of focus, but it worked. Nice good solder there, 14 gauge wire. And now we've got some 10 gauge wire. I'm curious how well this'll do. This might be a little ambitious for this tiny tip, but 
I'm curious. But that's what this boost is for. Let's boost the heat up there. Come on, baby. It wants to. This is like the worst splice in the world. Flow, baby, flow. Thermal runaway. <laughs> that's probably not good. I mean, it's kind of doing it. Crank it up to 750. This is not how I would prefer to solder 10 gauge wire, but it's kind of doing it. It's really, ha it's really struggling to keep temperature with this size wire. You can see it's at 645 degrees right now. What will it do on DC power, I wonder? Like, I, I already think we're hitting the limit of this soldering iron with this 10 gauge wire, but I'm kind of just determined to do it and make what will possibly be the worst solder joint in internet history. I mean, it's working if you're out in the field and you're in a pinch. I mean, it's, it's heating up all the way on the other side. Boy, I can only imagine the comments I'm gonna get from this soldering job. Yeah, okay, so it's flowing now. Yeah, all right, we'll call it there. And there's my uh, 10 gauge soldering. So yeah, it worked. Boy, did I have to put a lot of heat on there. I mean, this whole wire is hot, so no, definitely not best soldering practice, but I think that's probably more my lack of skill than the iron. It definitely, I think it worked better on 12 volts than it did with just USB there though. But yeah, it did the job. And once you're done, you let it cool down, which only takes, I mean, it's literally been about two minutes since that last clip and it's already cool to the touch. We can unplug it, put our little solder tip cleaner back in its bag with the solder, zip it up, stick it in the box, take our little helping hands jobby there, put the iron back in, put our USB cable back in and we are done. Well, I certainly hope you've enjoyed this review of the Pine Sill Smart Soldering Iron. As always, there will be an affiliate link in the description. My name is Mike K and I'm Marty. Thanks for watching Ham Radio 2. We'll see you next time.